Um, now we leave the Cratchits and we come to Fred. Uh, the thing that really strikes me at the beginning of this passage right away in stave three is um, this idea that uh, who the narrator is. He's this kind of conversational person. If you if you happen to know anyone who laughs as well or who's happier than the nephew of Scrooge, I should like to know him too. I don't know who this narrator is, um, but he seems... The narrator seems um, conversational, uh, passionate... No, not passionate, like a storyteller uh, involved in the story. Um, I don't know if elsewhere you can find places where this is the case. Um, it is fair, even-handed, noble adjustment of things that while there is an infection in disease and sorrow, there is nothing in the world so irresistibly contagious as laughter and good humor. Um, and I think this might be one of the things in the book that, look... Um, there are, I'm not Karl Marx. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, Dickens did write journalism addressing poverty. But the idea is if you can laugh and you can get others to laugh and feel maybe, maybe it's a way of actually getting change through joy. Um, I think that's one of Dickens' points here. Um, so uh, Fred's laughter is really important. It's not just he's silly or he's vacuous, or he's shallow. His laughter is a way of meeting the pain of the world, if that isn't too grandiose. Ha, everyone's laughing. He said Christmas was a humbug, and he believed it too, okay? So he's talking about Scrooge. Obviously, he hates Christmas, and he's recounting it. Sh more shame for him, Fred. Then he said indignantly, she's annoyed, okay? It's not, it's not okay. Bless those women. They do nothing by halves. They're always in earnest. So the women call it. They're like, he's a jerk. He's ridiculous. Um, she was pretty, exceedingly pretty. I'm just going to... We're going to focus on her for a second. Um, ripe little mouth that seemed made to be kissed. That's a bit weird. As no doubt it was. All kinds of good little dots about her chin that's melted into one another when she laughed. And the sunniest pair of eyes you ever saw in any creature's head. That's really... That's okay. Still, it's still misogynistic. I, well, it's not misogynistic. It's just sexist, I guess. But that's nice. Sunniest pairs of eye. That glowing. Oh, perfectly satisfactory. Fred. He finds him funny, comical. It's silly. It's it, And not so pleasant as he might be. However, the fences he carries carry their own punishment. Okay? I have nothing to say against him. He's his own worst enemy. Look, he's, he's loaded. Who cares if he's loaded? His wealth is of no use to him. He can't enjoy, can't enjoy. He's harming only himself. He can't even satisfy himself, and he's not going to benefit us with it. I'll tell you that. Forget about it. I have no patience with him, observed Scrooge's niece. I have. And this is really crucial. Fred sympathizes with him. I'm sorry for him. I couldn't be angry. Can't be angry. Even if I tried. Who suffers by his ill whims? He. He does. It's always him. Here he takes it into his head to dislike us, and he won't come and dine with us. What's the consequence? He don't lose much of a dinner, and they make jokes. But again, it's worth thinking about. That Fred says the way Scrooge is doesn't really affect me. It only affects him. Again, we get this vision of uh, generosity uh, and kindness and love doesn't cost us anything. Um, and later he says a little more. I was only going to say that the consequence of his taking a dislike to us and not making merry with us is, I think, that he loses... Some pleasant moments. Which could do him no harm. I am sure he loses pleasanter companions than he can find in his own thoughts, either in his mouldy office or his dusty chambers. I mean, to give him the same chance every year, he will not stop coming. Okay? Whether he likes it or not, because, and here, this is painful, I think. I pity him. I feel bad for him. 
Um, he may rail at Christmas till he dies, but he can't help thinking better of it. I defy him if he finds me going there in good temper year after year and saying, Uncle Scrooge, how are you? If it only puts him in the vein to leave the poor Clark 50 pounds, that's something. And I think I shook him yesterday. If all I do is maybe convince him to leave Cratchit or someone who works for him 50 pounds, maybe that is something. Um, but really, ultimately, Fred will not um, stop loving his uncle no matter what. It doesn't really matter if Scrooge takes it. It's unconditional, maybe. It's family love, hurt self versus give to others is what I'm writing. If you care, give to others. He he will keep being. He will keep giving himself. Um, he won't stop just because he rejects him. And the idea of pity, I think, is a bit brutal. That that he feels sorry for him, and um, that's why he does it. Uh, again, for Scrooge watching this, he might say, I don't need your pity, but he might also, his heart might be opening to what it means to be unconditionally loved. <laughs>